In this video, I'm sharing with you some ideas for meals that feed a crowd or large family meals. Stay tuned. If you have watched my channel for a while, you may have heard me mention before that while I myself don't have a large family, so to speak, I have three children, I actually grew up in a large family. I am the fourth of five children, so I grew up in a household of seven, and I have before shared some meal ideas that my mom used to make that fed us, that kept us all fed and happy throughout the years. So I thought that I would do that again today, especially with Mother's Day on the horizon. I thought it would be a great time to share some more meal ideas that my mom used to make growing up that fed a lot of people. Tonight for dinner, I am making my mom's beef stroganoff, or at least the way my mom made beef stroganoff. I actually came across the original little recipe card. I think it was actually clipped from a magazine. She used to make this on special occasions. My brother requested it for his birthday. It's a really interesting stroganoff recipe, and actually the way that she served it, what she served the stroganoff over, is something very different but really tasty. I have my ingredients for the stroganoff laid out here, at least for the sauce part of the stroganoff. I have half of an onion, which I chopped, two tablespoons of butter. My mom always used stew meat, you know, beef stew meat that came already cut up in the package. I like to use this beef bottom round that's really, really thinly sliced. I will actually cut it into small pieces and I just like it because it cooks, you know, really evenly and really quickly. You can also use ground beef. I've made this with ground beef before. I have a quarter cup of flour and half a teaspoon of garlic powder, plus salt and pepper to taste, and you dredge the meat through the flour and the spices, and then cook it in the butter. It also calls for a tablespoon of Worcestershire and a tablespoon of ketchup, and then about one and a half cups of beef broth. One of these 14 and a half ounce cans is closer to two cups, but I'm gonna use that and also one cup of sour cream. I have my butter and my onions here in the pot. I went ahead and put it on medium low heat and I let the butter melt and the onions have been sauteing for just a minute or so on their own. And now I'm going to add the meat that I tossed with the flour and the seasonings. And I'm gonna let that brown together with the onions for a couple of minutes before I add the rest of the ingredients. And the meat that I'm using is very thinly sliced, so it doesn't take very long at all for it to brown up. If you are using ground beef, you would probably just add the flour with the butter and onions and make a roux and then cook your ground beef and then add the rest of the ingredients. If you are using thicker cut stew meat, it would need to probably brown a little bit longer before adding the rest of your ingredients. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil to kind of help this finish browning. I have a pretty large pot, so I feel like two tablespoons of butter just wasn't quite enough oil. Here we go. My meat is sufficiently brown. In fact, it's mostly done cooking. If there are still a few that are a little bit pink in a few spots, I'm not super worried about it because first of all, it's beef, but second of all, I'm going to let it simmer in the sauce. So anything that isn't quite finished cooking is going to finish simmering. So I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of my beef broth and kind of try to deglaze the pan just a little bit here. See if I can get some of these little flavorful bits up off of the bottom of the pan. So I'll need to turn the heat up just a tad because it needs to simmer just a little bit to do that. Okay, I'm gonna add the rest of my beef broth here. I can't get the ketchup open. Should have done this beforehand, should have prepped it. Tablespoon of ketchup, which I'm not gonna measure. Boop. Tablespoon of Worcestershire, which again, I'm not gonna measure. Stirring this up, and I'm gonna let it simmer together with the meat. I'm gonna turn the heat down to low. I'm gonna let it simmer for about five to seven minutes until it starts to thicken up just a little bit, and then we will finish it off with the sour cream. I know I say this all the time whenever I'm cooking for you guys on camera, but I wish that you could smell this. It smells so delicious. You could actually serve this as is, I guess, but I'm going to finish it out by adding a cup or one eight ounce container of sour cream. I'm gonna stir that in and just turn the heat down to low and let the sour cream heat through with the rest of the sauce, and then it will be ready to plate up. 
Now you absolutely could eat this over egg noodles, over rice, over mashed potatoes, but the way that my mom served it was over crunchy chow mein noodles. I know that sounds really odd, but I promise you it works, okay? It's really tasty. Sometimes I actually like to make up a little rice and do a little bit of rice and some chow mein noodles so you get the soft texture of the rice and then the crunchy texture of the noodles along with the gravy and the meat, but that's just the way we grew up eating it, over crunchy chow mein noodles and what that original recipe called for. If you've never tried it that way before, just give it a try. You might really like it. And like I said, I know it's a little bit um, unorthodox. <laughs> it's a little bit different, I think, to have beef stroganoff over the crunchy noodles, but that's just how I grew up eating it, and it's really delicious. Okay, here it is. It looks and smells delicious. I can't wait to dive into this. Everybody is very excited. I don't make this all the time. It's a treat because, you know, the beef is a little pricier than I would normally pay for just in standard everyday type meal. So it's a special treat for us to get to have this, but so delicious. Please give this recipe a try if you can. Um, it's a tried and true family favorite. It makes me so nostalgic. I know I make it just slightly differently than my mom does, but still the flavor, very much the same. Love it. I am delighted to be partnering with StoryWorth to bring you today's video, and especially with Mother's Day and Father's Day on the horizon, I think this is a very timely sponsorship because StoryWorth would make a fantastic gift for the moms and dads or the mom and dad-like people in our lives, and let me tell you why. StoryWorth is an online service that helps us connect with the loved ones in our life through sharing our stories and memories and preserving them. When you purchase a StoryWorth subscription or membership for somebody, StoryWorth will send a unique prompt to that person via email every week for a year with a question for them to answer. You can choose some of the questions that you would like to send to the person that you have purchased StoryWorth for, or StoryWorth actually provides a lot of ideas for questions, including some very unique ones that maybe we've never thought of. Like who is the most influential person in your life, or what is some of the best advice that your mother ever gave you? StoryWorth compiles the answers to those prompts and those questions over the course of the year, and at the end of the year, they put them into a beautiful keepsake book with pictures so that you can cherish that for generations to come. As I mentioned, I come from a large family and I'm on the younger end of that family. I'm the fourth of five children and my mother was the youngest in her family as well. So I actually did not get to know my grandparents very much in person. I got to know them through the stories that my siblings and my parents shared about my grandparents. So I am so excited to actually be able to gather the stories from from my parents, from my husband's parents about their lives so that my children will have that to cherish and treasure forever. Plus, this makes a fantastic gift for the person who already has everything, am I right? StoryWorth is offering a discount for my viewers today. Go to the link in the description box, storyworth.com slash Mindy to get $10 off your first purchase at StoryWorth. So with Mother's Day approaching, if you are looking for a really meaningful gift, meaningful for you and for the person that you are gifting it to visit StoryWorth, go to the link in the description box, storyworth.com slash Mindy. You're going to get $10 off your first purchase. I think this is a really fantastic, thoughtful gift that you can give to the moms in your life or the mom-like figures in your life. Those people that you just want to hear their stories and you want to remember them and be able to cherish them forever. And thank you so much to StoryWorth for sponsoring today's video. One of the quick meals that my mom would make, especially on nights that were pretty busy, was smoked sausage. And she would just take a few links of smoked sausage and slice it up and toss it into a skillet with some barbecue sauce to heat up. And my mom had a skillet that actually sat on the counter and plugged into the wall. I think it was kind of like a square shape. I think it had a beige lid. If I can find a picture of it, I'll put it here. But if you grew up in the 70s or 80s and your parents had one of those, let me know in the comments. When my mom made this, she would often serve this with either ranch style beans, that's like a chili seasoned bean, or with corn and with blueberry muffins. So we're gonna do corn tonight, and my mom would often just open up a few cans of corn, a little salt and pepper, and that was that, but I'm going to do this honey butter skillet corn. I actually made it several months ago, so you might have seen it before, but I have lots of new subscribers maybe who haven't seen it yet, or if you have, I'm gonna remind you about it, so I'll show you exactly how I'm doing that. 
I'm not sure why my mom served blueberry muffins with dinner. I mean, that was actually more common than having them for breakfast in my household. Maybe because they were easy since she tended to use box mixes for that. Maybe her mom did that or maybe my mom just really liked blueberry muffins. I don't know. But when I saw this mix in the grocery store, it made me kind of nostalgic and it's actually one of the things that made me think about this meal. You have seen me buy the little pouches of muffin mix that make like six muffins. You just add milk, but this one's better because it comes with a little tin of blueberries instead of the blueberries being freeze dried into the mix. So that's what we're gonna use tonight to go along with this. I made my muffins according to the package directions and I just popped them into the oven, but I'm employing a little trick that I learned when I did a pantry cooking video several months ago. And that is to actually bake the muffins at a higher temperature for the first three to four minutes that they're baking. So I have the oven set at 475 and I'm gonna let the muffins bake at 475 for about four minutes. And then I'm gonna open up the oven for just a few seconds to let some heat escape. And I'm gonna bump the temperature down to 425, which is the recommended temperature. And I'll let them cook for another eight to 10 minutes, which is about the recommended um, cooking time for these muffins. So what that little trick does of starting off at a higher temperature is supposedly it gives a burst of heat at the beginning so that the muffins rise really quickly and you get that nice dome shaped muffin and then you bump it back down for the rest of the cooking time. So supposedly that's what helps give it that like muffin top. I decided not to do the glaze on these. I kind of worked with it for a little while and the glaze just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I just scrapped that idea. We're just gonna have these the way that my mother would have served them, which is just with a little bit of butter. The honey butter skillet corn that I'm going to make is really easy. It's from a website called Together as a Family and I will leave that recipe linked in the description box. I'm gonna double it. My son, Brick, loved this the last time I made it. Of course, kids can be fickle about that. I mean, they can try something new and be like, this is the best thing you've ever made. And then you make it again for them. And they're like, why are you making us eat this devil food? So hopefully he remembers that he really likes this. It's very tasty. I like it too. So I'll show you what I'm using to make that. For the honey butter skillet corn, remember that I am doubling the recipe. The original recipe calls for one 10 to 12 ounce bag of frozen corn. And this is a two pound bag. So I don't actually need all of this to double the recipe. I'll just use about two thirds of this two pound bag here. And then I'm going to use four tablespoons spoons or half a stick of butter, four tablespoons of honey, and four ounces of cream cheese, and then salt and pepper to taste. I have my pan over medium heat and I melted my butter and my honey together and now I am just going to add my corn. I'm stirring that all together and I'm going to let it cook over medium heat for about five minutes until the corn starts to get tender. After my corn had cooked for a few minutes with the honey and the butter, I added some salt and pepper and now I am just stirring in my cream cheese. I'm gonna stir that until the cream cheese is melted and I'm going to pop the lid on this and let it cook on low for about four or five minutes longer and then it's gonna be ready. I'll probably just turn the stove off until we're ready to eat it. My kids are actually not big barbecue sauce fans, so I'm actually gonna turn this into a sheet pan meal and I'm gonna check the veggie crisper here. Ooh, okay. okay, I have some peppers here. I'm gonna chop these up and throw them onto a sheet pan with the chopped up turkey smoked sausage and I think that's how we'll eat it instead of in the skillet with the barbecue sauce. My peppers are chopped up and I drizzled a little bit of olive oil and sprinkled some anti-no-no seasoning on these. And I'm gonna give these a head start in the oven. I'm gonna pop them into the oven at 400 for about five minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is take them out and put the sliced smoked sausage on top and then pop them back into the oven for another five minutes. It doesn't take long for the smoked sausage to cook. And by laying them over the top of the peppers at the end, they're gonna help season and flavor it even more. shared several of the dessert recipes that my mom used to make when I was growing up, like her chocolate sheet cake or her apple crisp. But I wanted to share a recipe today that I've not shared before and I've not seen anything like it anywhere else. I used to request this all the time, especially for my birthday because I have a summer birthday and this is a strawberry cake. And the key ingredient for this strawberry cake are frozen sweetened strawberries. They used to come in a 10 ounce carton. In fact, the recipe card that my mom actually had it down for me from her recipe box calls for using half of a 10 ounce box of frozen sweetened strawberries in the cake and then the other half in the frosting recipe. You can still find frozen sweetened strawberries in the freezer section, at least I can. I've seen them at my local grocery store and at my Walmart. Do not make the mistake of subbing fresh strawberries or regular frozen strawberries, unsweetened frozen strawberries because the cake won't turn out the same. It also calls for a box of white cake mix 
egg whites and I actually just bought a carton of egg whites and used the equivalent that the recipe calls for. It calls for water and oil and also a box of strawberry flavor jello. I used my scale to measure out five ounces of the frozen sweetened strawberries since the original recipe calls for half of a 10 ounce box. But when I look at the container, that comes out to about half of a cup. And then it's a matter of just mixing the rest of the ingredients together, pouring the batter into a cake pan and baking the cake until it is done. Once the cake has cooled, the frosting recipe is really easy as well. It just calls for another five ounces of the frozen strawberries, a stick of butter or half a cup, and then a box of powdered sugar, which is the equivalent to about three and a half to four cups, because at the time that this recipe was typed out, a box of powdered sugar was usually one pound or 16 ounces. My rule whenever I'm making frosting from powdered sugar or icing, I just add powdered sugar until it's the consistency that I want. Then you just spread that out over the top of the cake and it's ready to go. The only thing about this cake is that it's not super duper pretty, so to speak. So if I want a nicer presentation, sometimes I will get some fresh strawberries and slice them up really thin and lay them out over the top of the cake. Or in the case of making it the other day, I was actually making it to take for Easter dinner at my mom's house. I just hunted down some Easter sprinkles from my baking cabinet and put those over the top to make the cake look a little bit prettier. I personally don't care how a cake looks. I care more how it tastes. And this one is a winner. So I will actually type out the directions for this recipe and I will leave that linked in the description box. So you can check out the description box to get the recipe for my mom's strawberry cake. I think my mom would not mind me sharing with you that cooking was not her favorite thing to do. She actually preferred to be outside. She loves to garden. She grew up on a farm. She always liked to grow a few vegetables outside as well. She would she would just much prefer to be out of doors. So it's no surprise that breakfast foods, which are usually quick and easy, were something that we had for dinner occasionally as well. Things like pancakes or scrambled eggs. Um, sometimes in the summertime, we would even just have a bowl of cereal and some fruit. But I'm gonna share with you a really easy breakfast pizza recipe that we ate when I was growing up. We often had this on Christmas morning, but it makes a great, you know, quick and easy weeknight meal as well. I believe it just has five ingredients. I was remembering correctly, there are five ingredients in this breakfast casserole. It starts with some Southern style O'Brien hash browns. We used to just call these potatoes O'Brien when I was growing up. They are hash browns that have onions and peppers in them. If you want to use just regular hash browns, you could throw in some diced onions and peppers or you could leave those out if you don't wanna use that. A pound of breakfast sausage cooked. So I'll go ahead and pop this into a skillet and brown it up here in a minute. I'm using turkey sausage. You could probably use cooked bacon if you wanted to. You could probably get away with just using half the amount of sausage. I'm gonna need five eggs, which I will um, crack in a bowl and beat. I'm taking the shortcut and I'm using shredded cheddar. And then it calls for crescent rolls as the crust. And you're probably gonna want to use one to two cans. It depends on the size of the can. I thought this was really interesting when I was at Walmart today. This can of crescent rolls is 12 ounces. It's the big and buttery crescent roll. And these are only eight ounces. This is the standard size, but they were essentially the same price. In fact, I think the big ones were three cents cheaper. So I don't know. Okay, I'm having a major problem. <laughs> getting this biscuit can open getting this crescent roll can maybe these then maybe this is why these were um still on sale or something maybe they were on rollback because they're defective cans i don't know okay i've never had this happen before i finally banged it hard enough on the counter that they came out the top of the can <laughs> so i guess something wasn't right with the seal on this one but we got them out if I was using a standard size can, I would probably use two because it starts by spreading the crescent rolls over a cookie sheet, and then you spread your hash browns over the top of the crescent rolls. You sprinkle your cooked sausage, fully cooked sausage, after you brown it up over the top of the hash browns, and then you pour your beaten eggs over the top of that and sprinkle some cheese on top and bake it in a 350 degree oven until it is done. Here is the finished product with a little fruit on the side. I ended up baking mine at 350 for about 25 minutes. So you'll just wanna keep an eye on it. And I did grease my pan really well, so it came out very easily. 
And this does, in my opinion, make a pretty good breakfast prep as well. You could just go ahead and slice up the pizza into little you know, slices like this, little squares, and pop them into a container in the refrigerator and just reheat them throughout the week as you need them. Yum. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to StoryWorth for partnering with me to bring you today's video. And don't forget to check out that link in the description box, storyworth.com slash Mindy to get $10 off your first purchase. And if you are looking for more family friendly, really easy, delicious meals that you can make, check out this video.